All right, uh, keeping with today's uh, strap theme, I'm going to be demonstrating how to make uh, smooth straps. So let me get some of my materials over here and then I'm going to have Danny swap back over to the overhead camera. All right, so what I mean by smooth straps. So um, the recommendations that I'm going to be talking about, I certainly don't use them all the time, but I thought it would be nice to talk about them in case you wanted to implement any of these um, recommendations for getting smooth straps. So what I mean by a non-smooth strap is sometimes you're probably familiar with after top stitching a strap, it might be a little wavy. Usually once you sew it into the finished bag, um, that problem solves itself, but um, there's certainly a few things that you can do in order to avoid that waviness and then just get that strap started off with completely smooth once you pull it off the sewing machine after top stitching. So the first and most simplest thing that you can do is cutting your fabric along the grain rather than cutting it from selvage to selvage. So what I mean by that, so I've got a bolt of fabric here and let me flip this over so you can see, oh, that side looks kind of dirty and dusty. All right, so here's my bolt of fabric. As you can see, the selvage is on one, on one end. So what I'll often do when I'm cutting my straps is I cut the strap from selvage to selvage. So I'll just cut, if I need a four inch wide strap, I'll just take my ruler and cut four inches all the way across from selvage to selvage. However, the first step of things that you can do to avoid waviness instead of cutting that direction is to cut parallel to the selvages. Doing this might, you might need to have a little bit of extra fabric, but if you cut along the selvage, say the four inches along the selvage instead, that'll greatly help um, in regards to avoiding that waviness that I was just talking about earlier. So. Another thing that you can do to avoid that waviness is when you're top stitching your strap, if you, let me pull out this cotton strap up so you can see the stitches. All right, so if you stitch your strap in the same direction going both ways, so often what I'll do is, because I like to use a certain area of my presser foot to line up for top stitching, what I'll often do is I'll stitch it from this direction and then when I'm coming back down the other direction, I'll flip it over. So. That way will result in some waviness. To avoid that, all you need to do is stitch it in the same direction going both ways. So um, sewing it uh, this direction and then just moving it over and sewing it from the same direction on the other side so the fabric is moving in the same way. Another and third method to avoid wavy straps is to use either a bit of twill tape which I have here and let me pull out a little bit of that so you can see what it looks like. It's quite thin, although very sturdy. So you can either use twill tape or you can use grow grain ribbon. You'll want to look for grow grain ribbon that doesn't have a pattern to it. So a solid color like this will be nice and flat. Either of those will work for this method and you can either use the ribbon that's the same width as your finished strap or you can purchase ribbon or twill tape that's slightly less wide. So for this demonstration, I'm using for a one inch uh, wide, actually I cut this wrong. Um, I meant to cut it two inches wide. Let me quickly cut this in half just so I can properly demonstrate. So, all right, I meant to cut two inches wide because I wanted a one inch wide cork strap and I just wanted the two layers of fabric. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that really quick. So because the finished strap is going to be one inch wide, I have either tool tape here, this tool tape is three quarters of an inch wide, or the grow grain ribbon is seven eighths of an inch. So both slightly less than the width of the strap. Um, in doing that, you'll reduce uh, either some of the ribbon showing, or if you're using this method with quilting cotton, you'll avoid having um, extra tape kind of uh, bulked up in the, the pressing. So, I'm gonna go ahead and cut my twill tape the length that I need. And again, this is obviously not a full long strap just for the demonstration. And I'm going to use a bit of washable fabric glue just to kind of temporarily hold this twill tape down. So again, you can use either the, the ribbon or the twill tape. I'm just going to go ahead and stick that down. And then I'm going to take my Wonder Clips and I'm just gonna go ahead and 
fold this over so that both of the edges are aligned. And then after that's secured, you, just, you can just go ahead and take this over to the sewing machine and top stitch as you normally would. And this piece right here, I top stitched before the show and I actually opted to go with two lines of top stitching just to securely hold that in place. And what that will do, um, even with only the two layers of the cork fabric, the, the twill tape or the ribbon is, uh, it's, not going, it's not bending, it's not stretching. Having that in there will be extra stability, especially with the thinner layer of just the, the two layers of cork, vinyl or leather. It's also, it's also possible to use that in uh, a pressed uh, quilting cotton strap. Like I was showing you earlier with that uh, strap or acrylic template, you can go ahead and cut the twill tape or the ribbon and insert that before top stitching as well, just like you did with the, the cork. So what I would do here again, you can, if you wanted to use the washable glue stick to hold the twill tape in place, just slide that in there and then refold. Obviously you'll want to press this first and then attach some wonder clips and then go ahead and take this to the sewing machine and top stitch. And again, super sturdy, nice, smooth straps. So I hope you enjoyed that demonstration for the smooth straps. Um, 